that today are running us through uh, today's Rhapsody. Behind me you can see the topics um, from the past week, but I'm going to be reading us through, I mean leading us through um, Sunday's Rhapsody. So it says, 1 Timothy 4 verse 14, And that special gift of ministry you were given when the leaders of the church laid hands on you and prayed. Keep that dusted off and in use. If you aren't careful to watch whatever God gives you, you could lose it, and part of watching it is that you are using it. For example, if you are given the gift of prophecy and you aren't using it, after a while, it will become more difficult for you to manifest that gift or edify the church with it. It brings to mind the question the dear lady once asked me. She said, Pastor Chris, when I got born again, I was blessed with the gift of prophecy, but I don't know where the gift has gone. What can I do? First, Romans 11 verse 29 says, For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. That means he doesn't take them away. For that dear lady, the gift was always in her. It didn't go anywhere. She was the one that might have strayed away from it or made it dormant by not using it. If you're in a similar situation today, it's simple that it's simple what you should do. Get back in the flow of the spirit and stay in it. First, make sure your commitment to God is very clear in your spirit. Be totally committed to serving the Lord. Secondly, you get back to praying. Prophecy is bringing forth the word of God that's given to your spirit. But you don't get that word when you're in fellowship with him, when you're not in the fellowship with him. Get yourself back to fellowship with the Lord, and your spirit will be stirred. Thirdly, pray in tongues more often. This will energize, strengthen, and inspire your heart. It will make your spirit become more sensitive. Then, study the word and meditate on it. Remember, it's the Holy Spirit who inspires prophecy in your spirit. And he's the author of the scriptures. He'll make his word and message more palatable to your spirit. And because your spirit has become more sensitive, you'll be able to pick his word, his message, and make it available to your soul and to God's people in prophecy. Hallelujah. So I'm just going to say a prayer and I would like everyone to repeat after me. Dear Father, Dear Father I thank you for the gift of prophecy. I thank you for the gift of prophecy. I'm inspired and aided by the prophetic intimidations. I am received by the Spirit even now. I receive by the Spirit even now. I declare that my life is for your glory. I declare that my life is for your glory. My future is that of success. My future is that of success. Progress and prosperity in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Progress and prosperity in the gospel of Jesus Christ. I dwell continually in peace. I dwell continually in peace. Divine health and your grace. Divine health and your grace. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Hi guys. Um, I'm Adet. I'm so happy to see you faces. Like I'm excited. But anyways, um, this is our testimony segment, and it's basically where we get to share the goodness of God in our lives. You know, it could be an old testimony or like something that's just happened in the past week. Honestly, just thanking God for whatever's happened. Um, so yeah, with that said, does anyone have a testimony that would like to share? Just chill, wait. <laughs> um, I do 
violet, and I finished my first year last year, but I didn't really finish. See, that's why that's why it's so tricky. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, basically, I was fighting for my life with this one module, just fighting. You look so concerned. <laughs> with this one module, just fighting for my life, like yo, I did it and I did it again, and it just didn't work. So you know when things like when you fail in uni, this this you should listen. When you fail in uni, uh, they'll chase you like no remorse. Like they don't care like, international fees. They don't care like they'll tell you just bounce. Like it's peak for you. Basically, um, yeah, I got kicked out of university, guys. And I can't believe I'm here saying this for the world, but it is for good. So it's not it's not for the world. I'm just giving myself some encouragement. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, so I got kicked out of uni, and then I appealed my case because obviously, like a lot of things happen mentally in university, and I just wasn't in the best place in my life when I was doing the exams. Um, yeah, I won't go into depth about that because that's another story. <laughs> but um, yeah, I appealed my case, so I submitted my appeal on the 20th of September, right? And I basically asked to redo the exam, but like as an internal student, who we can be like as an internal student. And um, yeah, I put my situation. So there I am, like my life is falling apart before my eyes, like I'm freaking crying, my mom is panicking every day, like my mom, has been so great. If my mother ever watches this mom, I love you so much because <laughs> she's done more research than me in this situation. She loves everything. But anyway, um, yeah, I submitted and I was like, okay, Annette, like, what's the game plan? You've been going to ETN, like, you've been learning, oh, there's power in God, there's power in speaking in tongues, like, how are you going to utilize this now? Because I can't do anything. Like, I can't go and beg. I can't go and beg to the examiners, just take me back. Like, I just, Something has to happen for me. Some divine intervention has to come through. So I'm like, okay, I'm there, I'm asking Didi, I'm asking, am I just meant to pray 70 hours? Like, should I just give my life to prayer? Like, I've stopped eating, like, should I just be fasting and pray like all the days of my life? Like, what's going to happen? And it's like, okay, yeah, I got a lot of things, it's not about like how long you pray, how many hours you spend in prayer. And I also did a lot of research. See, this is why I'm just, I'm, I'm diverting. But I'm very grateful for this whole thing, even though it's been the worst period of my life. Maybe not the worst, but close to the worst. But anyway, um, yeah, so I was praying concerning my matter. Jamie prayed with me a lot as well, which was very helpful. And some of the leaders as well. Um, so they came in prayers, we have prayers every day. And yeah, I was just praying over my situation, praying specifically for the people that are going to look at my appeal, like, you know, praying for my paper to be on top, like, Jaden had visions about my paper, like, <laughs> amazing, like, it was serious. I was like, wow, me, it's spiritual. But it's scary, I've also never been like, I haven't been this spiritual, like, growing up, it's just that it. TTM, shout out, TTM, shout out. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I prayed and I prayed, and obviously, like, it's been long, like, depression, everything that the devil, like, this prayer also told me that the devil has hands, guys. Like, me who's been trying to live right, and someone who's living somewhere else, some other type of life. Like, I submitted my appeal with one other girl on it, and she got her response, like, two weeks before mine, and we submitted on the same day. So I was like, how does this work? Like, why is it that me, like, they are just not carrying me out? Like, why isn't it happening for me? Um, yeah, my appeal came out like two weeks later, which was like this Friday. And literally, in the morning that, that morning, I was like, guys, I'm actually knocked. Like, I'm tired. Like, I'm genuinely tired. I was texting Jen and he said, bro, girl, I'm not feeling good. Like, I just want to disappear into the ground or something, like, it's not happening for me. And I was really in the pits, like, I, I've never seen my life go in such a decline, ever. 
But um, yeah, like I was in the shower and they said, God, look, like you just need to just do something like now. Like I'm telling you, it's my last throw, like for real, for real this time. I was saying, but that day, that day, Friday, I was like, no, 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 no. I'm signing out, like, peace. Anyways, the same day, my review came out, right? And they're like, yeah, and then you can do your exam. Yeah! And I was like, that's crazy! <laughs> Even though it's not exactly what I wanted to happen, I'm very grateful to God because I'm allowed to do my exam again. And you know, it's just peak, like as an international student. Like imagine just living your life, like they're not sponsoring your visa, like policemen can come and watch you. Like that's been my biggest fear. Like they'll just look and say, let's speak. Book your flights because of the white But um yeah, my appeal came out, so I'm just very, very grateful to God for that and for the experience because it taught me a lot. It taught me to persevere, it taught me to keep going, it taught me to keep praying and praying continually. It's also taught me like scriptures, like I've always been read. Let me not say every because that's like a sin or something. <laughs> but like, I've always been like, you guys who are praying and you're saying this is. I want to do that, and like I finally learned some verses that they can say about praying, and that's very exciting for me. So, um, yeah, that's my testimony, my huge testimony. Um, all right, so if anyone else has a testimony to share, no, cool. Um, I'll just close in prayer. Father Lord, we thank you for this day that you've given us, and we thank you for the opportunity to meet like this. Thank you for everyone that is here, and we pray that you may open their hearts to receive whatever is in store for them. Thank you that you hear us, and thank you that you are here for us. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen.
I would recommend to take notes in church. It's very, very important. So that you have something there. Even if you never go back to the notes, just know that writing is part of learning. And as you write, it has something about imprinting in your memory. Okay? That kind of thing. So we've been dealing on unification by the Spirit. Now, the reason this is a very interesting topic is because I don't think it's very um, basic in terms of Okay, who's experienced with church? You go to church like at home. You go to church at home? What church? Um, United Church of Zambia. Wait, hold on. Do you speak French or something? No. <laughs> oh, it just has a French name or something. No, United Church. Oh, sorry. It's me that's easy. <laughs> United Church of Zambia. Okay, great. You experienced with church? What church do you go? Um, Good Tidings Baptist Church. Okay. Everybody has like an experience of church. That's the point. Everybody has, I knew you were so, 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 everybody has an expressive church. And you just know that there are some things that are easier, you know, like your typical message of salvation. Like, oh, yeah, Jesus died for us, and Jesus is this, 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 this. Close to death to them. So, the point is, a lot of times, Christianity is streamlined to just you know, what is the Jesus saved us, and, but there's more. Right? So, that's what we try to expose people to. I'm wondering where to start. We'll go to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1. Let's start from there. So, let's start learning. 1, 2, 6. Ephesians chapter 3. The book of Ephesians is a letter. Just know that your Bible is a bunch of letters. Paul. Okay? And he wrote to the church at Ephesus, a location like he would write to the church of Zambia or the church of Cameroon or Nigeria or anything, right? And I want you to see in chapter 3 what he wrote. Okay? I always leave the screen for people to read from. It says, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ, of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given to me, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, Whereby, when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. He says that something was committed to him. A ministry, a revelation, an understanding was given to Paul. Okay? And then he says that when you read these scriptures, when you read this thing that he's written, you'll be able to understand his knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Now, this word, so I'm not going to stay to it. Knowledge, right? Can you see it? In English, how many people have ever heard that English is a very weak language? It's very weak. Have you ever heard that before? Yeah, I have. French. You see, it doesn't. I remember. Look, Gabriel is an amazing guy. He's like, English. <laughs> so, it's a very weak language in the sense that it would use the same word to say five different things. Right? But most other languages can fine tune. This word knowledge, okay, in the Greek, is the Greek word sonesis. S-U-N-E-S-I-S. So I want to distinguish something for you. Knowledge, understanding, wisdom. Who can distinguish it first? You know when people are praying for you, they say, the person is wisdom, knowledge, understanding. I would just think, oh my God, what a complete prayer. Wow. <laughs> but we don't know what each of them mean. Okay? Knowledge, basically. You can, yeah, go for it, man. I love this. <laughs> go for it, go for it. Like, knowledge is like this. Knowledge is information. And uh, it's a computer say, oh, you know, this thing happened. Now you know that. Understanding is a little bit more deep. Like, you know. Let's say, for example, someone like 
experience, X experience. The mind knows the experience, it's the mind understands how, like let's say someone that has that, like, uh, okay, a couple of information, and so if you have someone, alcoholic person, for example, yeah, like the, the addiction with alcohol. Yeah. So, we, some, some people can just know that it exists, that's knowledge. Yeah. Some people understand how it can affect, like some people are doctors, and yeah. like so they understand how the addiction can affect someone's life, right. and everything, but maybe the, like not every doctor has been through uh, yeah. like, the experience, and knowledge is when you have actually been through like someone who has been alcoholic for like some years and then they have left it now they are wise or wiser because they have been through it and now they yeah, know that about it. Okay, great, give them a hand, you try it. Yeah. Yeah. So we have knowledge just information. I know about this, like you know what I mean. Understanding is the mental putting together. Okay, and we'll see why this is important. Knowledge is basic. You can know something but know nothing about it really. Like you just know this is asking asking what you just know this is more than Understanding is how it came together. Though okay, one plus one plus this was this you understand. Right? And that is actually the Greek word that you have there. You understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, but like I told you in English, it's all just written as knowledge. Right? But he's saying that when you read right, the scriptures that I'm written for you, you'll be able to get my understanding of the mystery of Christ. The way I have put this thing called Christianity together. Meaning you'll be able to understand my mindset. The exact relationship with this thing. Often, when somebody knows something, if they can't explain it, it's because they don't understand it. They've not gone that deep into it to understand, this is why this is like this. For example, someone was praying today, and how many people, okay, if someone put out here, did you notice his voice was a bit unclear? In terms of, it was very, it sounded very, uh, I don't know how to explain it, without being too sound theory kind of guy, but it was a bit muddy. In a sense, that's how we describe it. But it's basically just it's a male problem. <laughs> you know, because when we get to even when he did you not notice? Pretty good. <laughs> I'll thank God for it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's the only thing I can say. You see, if you don't have a function, <laughs> you're not even able to see, you just realize it's God. So, what did I do? I got to the speaker, and there are two knobs there's bass and there's treble. Because Uncle has too much bass in his voice, <laughs> I turned on the bass, right? And I increased the treble, I said the higher frequency. <laughs> That's what understanding is like. So I understand, so I have knowledge, so I can speak. But the understanding is, okay, he has this bass, he has this treble, he has this, you understand? So we can manipulate stuff. And through doing this over time, we develop wisdom regarding it. So now I can get to the point where I can just say, oh, you, just turn off this, turn off this, you understand? I become wise with it. So Paul says that when you read the scriptures, you'll be able to get his understanding. The way he has put Christ together. His understanding. And I was explaining that there is a fellowship with knowledge. Meaning that when you get to know something, it, there's something it produces in you. Let's go there. Genesis uh, chapter 4. Let's bring up uh, my scripture. Sorry. <laughs> mm-hmm. Great. Chapter 1. I mean, chapter 4, from verse 1. Now, Adam knew his wife. That's what we have there, right? We can all read, isn't it? So, it's not me manufacturing. Adam knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain. Question, didn't Adam know his wife before? Yeah. I mean, he's been with this woman. In fact, it was so deep, the love that they shared, that the first time he saw Eve, he said, this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. My goodness, she shall be called woman. For so he, my guy already was relating. But why would it say, I knew his wife and she conceived. She gave birth. The point is that with everything that you know, there is a fellowship, a mingling, and it produces something. You know about the power of prayer, so you pray more. You know about the importance of education, so you go to school. It always produces something inside of you. 
Now Paul says that there's something God has made known to me. You can go back to Ephesians chapter 3. He says that God has made something known to me. And I'm not here. Is Paul alive today? No. He says, so I'm not here today. But by reading these things that God has made known unto me, you'll be able to get my mindset the way I have come to understand Christ. Does it make any sense now? Make any sense? You'll be able to understand Christ. Great. So, John chapter 2, verse 8. Before we go there, go to Galatians chapter 5. What is this? I said my subject is unification by the Spirit. And what I was basically explaining is that the Holy Spirit, who is the Holy Spirit? I'm breaking it down like this because I know that we're all on different planes and I don't want to let me assume I'm talking like this. I think he thought they want to do things in church and then nobody understood what they were saying. Huh? Who is the Holy Spirit? Anybody know? The Holy Spirit. The Spirit. The Spirit of God. Very simple. Okay, so let's make some things. His name is not Holy Spirit. Hmm? I like the face. Yeah, you look so Holy Spirit. His name is not Holy Spirit. But God is his spirit. Okay? Jesus thought of that. Meaning he's not flesh. We can't see him. But he's a spirit. Alright? And he had a son, Jesus Christ. Huh? Yeah, when I'm he's a spirit. And his spirit is called the Holy Spirit. So when we say the Holy Spirit, we're referring to the Spirit of God, God's Spirit, okay? And I was explaining that the Holy Spirit is powerful in the sense that He's able to bring unity. And I took us, or people that were there, to the book of Nehemiah, no, Ezra, okay? Basically, the children of Israel were sinning, and Ezra started praying. And as he prayed, the Bible says that a huge company of people assembled to Him. And they just wanted to repent. And I said, I wanted us to note how that they just started to repent. And it says that the Spirit of God was upon those people to give them one heart, one mind. Alright? To serve God. So basically, the Holy Spirit was upon the congregation to kind of give them a focus. I said that this is something that's possible. Sometimes, or a lot of times, we find that in our family, not everybody believes. If you notice the opening prayer points, we're praying concerning people that don't believe the gospel yet. Why? Because they need to be saved. Jesus said, a person can't see the kingdom of God, can't see heaven, except they are saved. So we pray concerning their salvation. Why are we trusting the Holy Spirit regarding their salvation? It's because He is able to bring that unification. He's able to give them one mind. He's able to help them believe. I can't convince you about Jesus, no matter how much I say it, but the Holy Spirit is able to touch your heart. Right? Concerning it. That's why we pray like that. Great. Now, as Christians, we are, not just as Christians, but we are spirit beings. This is one important thing you need to know. Man or woman is a spirit, has a soul, and lives in a body. Meaning that you are not just this body that I'm talking to right now. There is a spiritual part of you. Your spirit, the human spirit. You have a soul that consists of your mind, will, emotions. Right? And you live in a physical body. So if this body gets sick and dies, what should remain? The spirit. Which will either go to God or to go to the other place. Huh? And that's how people to be saved. You understand? Does it make sense now? Now, Galatians 5 16 says, I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the loss of the flesh. Walk in the spirit. As Christians, we're called to have a spiritual walk. A spiritual walk. What does that mean? It means that God doesn't expect you to live just through this body. He doesn't expect you to just be so physical and so sensual. In the sense that you only relate your stuff to your five senses. For example, if I were to tell you that there are angels in this room, how would you feel? How would you be? You would now look around and say, yeah, is that, is that something I missed? But you can't perceive them with your natural vision. You have to wake up your spiritual senses. Have you ever met somebody that they are fine, they are dressed well, everything, but they seem to carry a bad aura? Or a depressing aura? Have you met somebody like that before? Okay, have you met some people? 
Okay, how much mean? I was just have some very nice bubbly already like hey if you love happy around me is like hey have you met that kind of person? Basically people carry different energies as we like to put it, right? But we can't see this energy. We can feel it. We just know that ah, this person carries kind of depression with them. This person carries joy with them. This person carries intelligence with them. How you know that you're just around them and all of a sudden you just feel so smart because you don't understand everything like, oh my god, wow, I didn't even know this. <laughs> hmm? Life is spiritual. Hmm? So he says, walk in the spirit. He says, I don't want you to be so physical, so sensual, where you can't discern, where you can't see spiritually. You're not alert to God. I miss the group of people. If God was speaking directly to you, would you know? If he was speaking in your heart trying to get you to do something, would you know? And this is the part of Christianity that sometimes is not talked about. Because going down to the is condemned. Hey, did you go to the club yesterday? Hey, did you smoke yesterday? Hey, did you? But there's more to it than just attacking somebody for, you know, their sins and problems. And when you start to learn about this relationship with God, the things of the world become less tasty and attractive. And you start to want to know God more and enjoy it. Because This is the attractive part of God. You're telling me that God can speak to me? That He can communicate to me His plan for my life. Some of us want to know our purpose. Anytime I'm on evangelism, one thing I tell people is I ask them, I remember I used to do this. I would say, Do you know your purpose? Do you know why you're here? And they were like, Okay, I'm not sure this, 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 this. I tell them, Can the Father truly determine His own purpose? He has to ask the manufacturer. Only the manufacturer of the product knows exactly what he was created for. And when the product is functioning outside its manufactured purpose, we call it what? Abuse. Right? Uh, toothbrush was created for teeth. You feeling all wise and good, you carry your toothbrush <laughs> and inside you to scrub your car outside. <laughs> With even toothpaste. Is that too is that too brush feeling is almost? You understand? Because the manufacturer has a different plan. Same way, God has a plan for us. He wants to be able to communicate it to us. But if we are too sensual, too bodily, you only hear what's happening here. You understand? You only hear with your physical ears. You only see with your physical eyes. You'll be able to relate. If he was talking to you in a crowd, you wouldn't know. I remember, he's his spirit. So he's not going to come and talk to you like a physical person and say, hey, you get it? So that's why we're trying to train our spiritual senses to understand these things. Now, the important to understand, go to Jonah chapter 2, verse 8. I like that sort of thing. I think everybody's fine. That's what you get. Yeah, Don't worry about getting everything, you know, the first time you hear it. Spiritual things like this, you learn, and the more you learn, it will come relatable. And then, born Catholic, raised Catholic, Everything. Alright? She came here and just like some of you, when you hear us praying the dogs here, this is a madness. <laughs> Why are you talking about it two nights ago? I was talking about it with the queen. She was like, Do you do that? <laughs> and I had to say the, the voice note because I found it so funny. <laughs> it, you know, the voice note says, Do you do that? It was, it was just funny to me. Hmm? And we were talking about it. Only for her to go to church on a Sunday morning, you know. And then Sam says, yes, yes. So I'm going to be praying. After his baritone, of course. Yeah, I'm going to be reading from Ephesians chapter 3, verse 7. And after he's done, next thing. Proclaim is just like, huh? Huh? So these things don't make sense yet. But I'm not praising Thomas now, right? Jay came here. She wasn't praying in tongues before. She knew about it. But she also started praying in tongues. The point is, it starts off as, what is this mysterious thing? And before you identify the job, that's, it just happens. What does it say there? Those who regard worthless idols forsake their own mercy. I want you to do it in the KJV, because I want you to see something there. In the KJV, this verse says, those who regard lying vanities forsake their own mercy. Any KJV? I have it here. It says, um, they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. 
great. He says, those who observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. What are lying vanities? What is vanity? Because it's vanity. <laughs> Don't worry, you understand. <laughs> what is vanity? It's something that's empty. All right? Fleeting for the moment. Temporary. And the Bible teaches us that things that are physical are vanity. Subject to decay. You have a room, you clean very well. After three months, come back to it. What will happen? You see cobwebs, you see dust. Everything that's physical is heading towards death. It's tending towards, you know, it's always spoiling. You have to try and manage it for it to be good. Even you as fine as you are now. If you just stay, find this. No shower, no brush, nothing. Just stay. So some of you can't even think about it. You didn't even move around. No gym, nothing. As you are, you just start going in different directions. <laughs> Everything is heading towards death, right? Or towards decay. Mm. The point is, those who regard physical things, things that are perishing, forsake their own mercy. But this is the case of a lot of Christians, right? They are so um, fleshly. If something goes wrong out here, they feel stranded. Oh, my result. Oh, my account balance. Oh, my this. And as soon as it happens like that, you're shook. But God doesn't want it to be that way. He wants you to live from the realm of the Spirit. I know, okay, who, who for, the, for you is it? It's like a new thing I'm saying about living from the realm of the Spirit or creating like that. It's a bit of a new thing. A bit of a new thing. I love the honesty. I love you. Some people are in their heart. Maybe. But really, it's a bit of a new thing. The point is, you're meant to live spiritually, walk spiritually, operate spiritually. Hmm? So, it's to an extent where physical things don't determine how you are, how you feel, how you operate. If things go bad in the flesh, in the physical, you don't feel stranded. You don't feel like this is the end of my life. And if you don't have that mentality, the world, as we say in Nigeria, will show you shaking. <laughs> you understand what I mean? To do you bad. Because things go bad in this world. But you have to have some inward convictions, things that you believe. No matter what happens, I will be alright. Yeah, that? <laughs> so you have to have those physical convictions. Okay. I was born in Northern Ireland. But I spent most of my life in Nigeria, so grew up in Nigeria, but came here for uni. So they class me as an international student. It's always interesting when you tell testimonies because you can only tell it that confidently because you succeeded. You understand? If you didn't succeed, you will not measure it. <laughs> but it then goes. The class was international. I mean, I'm paying something about 20 k for this law degree. If you're doing all this bad something, it's even like more toxic than like. <laughs> but not that bad, meaning that I'm meant to be a home student. I refuse to pay my school fees in second year. I'm a veg. So I refuse to pay my school fees. Because I'm trying to argue for home fees. They said, eh. So they locked me out of canvas. If you're in Europe, I think everybody here is UOP. Are you UOP? Yeah. So you know how to put that? Huh? You're in and out of Europe. Uh, we'll talk after I said this. <laughs> okay. So what is canvas is your life inside this room? <laughs> You have your textbooks, you have your lectures, everything. If they lock you out of campus, they lock you out of life. Just forget it. <laughs> right? But I was going to classes, everything, and people would be seeing me, and I'll just be smiling with them. You don't know that I'm fighting my own battles, right? But God knows that when they finally announced that I can have my own fees, I can't take it to the whole process. I was like, oh my gosh. Why was I calm? Because I was employing more forces than they knew about. It wasn't just a physical thing for me. Every day, spiritual torment to the administration. <laughs> they will be seeing my face in there too. <laughs> you must give me this office. <laughs> That's how I was operating. Right? And as a Christian, you have more than just physical forces. Do you understand? You have spiritual forces. You have angels. You have unseen beings that are working with you. You have power. It starts with first enlightening yourself. 
that okay, God has things for me, God has provision for me. Like Elijah, God said, Go into the brook of Kidron. I will send, um, what's it called? The ravens to feed you. But he was going into a wilderness. But God was able to provide for him. Elijah had a servant. And the servant said that we are encompassed all about and they are coming to kill us. Elijah didn't go, Elijah the prophet, okay, he's a prophet, a man of God. Elijah didn't go, they are coming to kill us. You don't mean it. <laughs> I'm finished here. He said, God, open these guys' eyes to see the protection that's around us. And the Bible says that God granted that request. Don't try to lose on me, don't mind. So, God granted that request and opened the servant's eyes. And the Bible says that he saw chariots of fire, right? angels compassed about him. The point is, are you vision away from your calmness? Is it because you are not seeing God's provision for you? You are not seeing, oh, that this is what he has for you. This angel is here for you. This protector has his providence over you. No one knows what the providence of God is. Anyway, it's basically the fact that God can see tomorrow and so your life is planned. Your tomorrow is not a shock or a surprise to you. So when you're in, in trouble, say you get as bad as it seems, but I've, I've been through it, you get kidnapped. Are you aware that God saw that day coming? Right? As a boy, like, okay, if God saw it coming, why didn't He just shield me away from it? There are some trials and problems you go through in this life. And what doesn't kill you? What? It is strong. So you see, Annette has gone through something so she can say, hmm, I came out stronger. The Bible says the trying of your faith is much more precious than gold. When your faith is tested, when you are shook, it's precious. One time the Lord was talking to me and he said, never be envious of the world's riches. Don't be jealous of people that, you know, they seem up there, they're celebrities. They, have, they seem to have everything. He said that there's something more important than gold, than wealth. He said it's the problems that you go through, the trials you go through. The Bible says it's much more precious than gold. Character is actually what brings wealth. Character. Discipline. Your ability, the you. You. What is inside of you? We talk about spiritual capacity. What can come out of you? Thank God, each one of us here is able-bodied. But are we all on the same plane in terms of experiences and what we can do in life? Maybe not. Why? We've each developed ourselves in different areas. For example, Gabriel, I know, I don't know if I know when Gabriel started working out or Jimmy very seriously, but I know that he has come quite some way. And he's what's up state of session? What? <laughs> I know. Oh, as soon as you have Gabriel, don't worry. You have somebody that you can use to brag that you have a gym for him. <laughs> right? It's reporting. Why? He has developed himself in that area. You understand? Some of us, it's on the musical side of things. Maybe sing. You can know before you play keyboard. You're before the same instrument. You have same ten fingers. Should we have ten? I have not, not remember that fact in a while ago. So ten fingers, right? But why is Brooklyn playing more? She's developed maybe herself in that area. The point is, it's about the kind of person you are. What you developed yourself in, that makes the difference. We come to church to learn about our spirit, our human spirit, and our relationship with God. And the fruit of that relationship. Such that when you go through life's trials, life's problems, you are more confident than the other person. Maybe, why? Because God is on my side. Hmm? You have the victory. And for a lot of Christians, the issue is, they maybe know that God is on their side and everything, but they don't know how to implement their spiritual forces. They don't know how to use the things that God has given them. That's kind of why we're in church to learn these things. But I wanted to show you that. So you have to be, you have to learn, this is one of my final points, but you have to learn to be spiritual. That's a good point. You know? Learn to be spiritual. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. Learn to be spiritual. Learn to be spiritually minded. To think from the realm of the spirit. To live from the realm of the spirit. Where you don't always judge by your eyes what you see, what you hear. If somebody were telling you a lie, would you be able to know? You know, there's some people that are very talented at lying. And then they perfect their heart. It's a science. And they have doctorate. <laughs> would you be able to know? 
We'll read this after this. But he says, You are a chosen generation. What's the next thing? A royal priesthood. A royal priesthood. Who is a priest? And mind you, the Bible is telling you who you are. You're a chosen generation. Someone was asking me one time, he says, Okay, so does God have a class of people he picks, he calls? Then of those called ones, he will now choose some. And obviously, when someone is asking that kind of question, because they already feel they have to their class, they're not quite they're already themselves. <laughs> and God has a special class of people. But the Bible says what? You're a chosen generation. Each one of us is chosen by God. So you shouldn't feel less of yourself. It says, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. So people like ask them, are you holy? <laughs> Friday night, <laughs> Saturday night before church. <laughs> but he says, You are a holy nation. He's all special people. Are you special? Mm-hmm. You know, the world teaches you today, you're just anybody. You are like every other person. You're saying, ah, you come on, person. If not, it's not, it's not, it's not. He's all special people. But I want you to just know that I don't want to go into too much. He says, You're a royal priesthood. A royal priesthood. Meaning your royalty, that's the first thing. Your royalty. The only means royalty means you don't have to be related to the crown. Right? Your royalty. What does that mean? You're a prince. You're a queen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right? Kings and queens. So what's royalty like? What's the talk of royalty? What's the mindset of royalty? There's a book I'm working on. It's called Think Like a King. Maybe I should put Queen just because of the inclusivity in this case. Think Like a King or a Queen. <laughs> Why? Because no one wants you to have that mentality. How does a King think? A Queen think? Does he think, hey, I'm broke. Hey, my life is over. Hey, no. A King, Queen, royalty thinks orders, decrees, power. Ability, strength, endurance, sustenance, perpetuity, long reign, long life. That's what God wants you to think. So you never meet me with a problem and I feel like, hey, your life is over, man. That's not the right friend to have. You should have friends that are saying, okay, come, let's pray. Like, like the man said, you know, about G, uh, let's pray about it. But he says, you're a real priest. Now, a priest, first of all, is a spiritual person. So you can know these kind of things out. A priest is a spiritual person who understands service to God and understands sacrifice to God. Priesthood and sacrifice. Two important things about priesthood. And God says that we are all priests, meaning we ought to understand how to serve God, service, and we have to understand sacrifice. These two things are what regulates kind of your experience of God intervening in your life. Your understanding of priesthood and sacrifice. Okay? But I understand that we can't make everything in the world today. No, we're not talking and this outside people will just be disturbing us and we just feeling like, oh my god, I don't understand. So we'll take some more, but I will have shook your brain a bit. You've heard some new things. The aim of all of this, like I said, is so that your Christian life is enhanced, you grow spiritual. Just as your brain physically, you grow spiritual. You become more discerning. You learn to hear the voice of God. You find out God's will for your life and you're able to pursue it. The most important thing at the end of the day is, did you fulfill your purpose? Or did you live an empty life? Did you live for men? Did you live for the praise of people? Or did you live for God? These are important things. And our reward in heaven is based on this thing. The Bible says that anything we do on this earth in heaven will be tried by fire. And some of you seeing that magic city, I want to be tried by fire. You don't even know why you're not doing anything for it. You have to try by fire. Do you have works that are going to be able to stand the fire of God? What have you done for God? Right? What have you done for God? Do you know souls? Did you allow your life to preach the gospel? Did you truly live as a Christian? These are some important you no know, thoughts here and there, but we'll, we'll learn about it. Right? And your Christian walk life will be enhanced. Who's learned something today? Anything? Good. Good. I'm, I'm happy. 
So I want to close here. Close here. <laughs> I want to close here. <laughs> I want to close here. And I'm looking forward to seeing us next week. 2 p.m. by the grace of Jesus Christ. Everybody be on time. When everybody's on time, we start on time. Alright? And it's always more helpful. But I'm happy you learned something. Thank you so much for coming. I'll just say a closing prayer and then we'll be able to take offerings so we can have the details. Father, thank you in the name of Jesus for this word. Thank you because it has reached the hearts of every person here. We've learned one or two things. Father, thank you because our Christian world will be enhanced. We'll learn to live spiritually, to walk in the spirit so that we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Thank you because we'll have a rich walk with you. We'll fulfill our purpose in you. So you can see. I like to explain things because uh, you know some, some people, not everybody knows everything. The reason we give an offering is because we're serving a deity, right? And when you're serving God, remember what I was talking about priesthood and sacrifice? You learn how to give to a deity. Alright? And of course God uses that to sustain his house. When you see all these things didn't come by magic, okay? People actually, you know. But so those are the offering details. You can give whatever amount you know God puts in your heart to give an offering. Um, feel free to take a snapshot of the details. Um, just in case you know, so that you're not ringing me. And I know how to speak to the people. So I'm not quite doing something like this. Why is this something like that? Father, I thank you for every person given an offering today. I thank you because they are blessed and you are doing things. Yes, I kind of learned everybody's name, right? So we're all good. Not really. Not really? Okay, let's do some more. Okay. Brickley? You said that? What is she just doing? Okay, yeah. Shoot. Right, I'm the queen. Tell us something about it. Aston, actually, um, I study um, economics and um, I make music. Now. Right. I'm really the happy person. Oh, it's, it's coming out soon, though, so you, you know, you guys. We've got you, we've got you, don't worry. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm usually the happy guy in the fellowship, so I bring all the vibes. I bring all the vibes, so yeah, that's me.